Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Do you have a probe in your machine? Because if you do, Today I'm going to show you how you can drive that probe inside of Mastercam using Simcoe Probing. Let's go ahead and take a look at Simcoe Probing on my Mastercam screen. So I already have uh, Simcoe Probing loaded in my Mastercam and I put it in my ribbon up on top. Um, there's going to be three distinct cycles here that Simcoe Probing is going to give us. Workpiece alignment. This is if you have any rotaries in your machine. Uh, we can align the part to our machine, even if it is skewed. Workpiece datum. Um, this is going to be any work offset uh, settings in your machine, as far as your G54s, 55s, or basically setting any offsets in your machine for part pickup. And then we do have workpiece inspection. Workpiece inspection is going to allow me to do in-process uh, inspection on my part inside of Mastercam, which can make it very efficient tool inside of Mastercam. So on my part here, let's go ahead and take a look at this. First, we're gonna do some workpiece datum settings here. So on this part here, um, I already have a process to this point, but kind of let's uh, envision that I'm starting this from the beginning. So my workpiece datum, we have all these options in here, and you're going to be seeing O numbers at the end of these uh, options. The, the O numbers are macros that your machine will read that we'll discuss a little later. In this case here, I just want to find the center of my stock. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do a rectangle outside. This is going to open up my simple cycle probing on the left hand side. Now you will be able to create your probes with a lollipop tool or we can import them in and create them as actual Renishaw probes. In this case here, I already have a Renishaw probe created. In my cycle, now I have a rectangle outside. This is going to be what I'm going to do to pick up my part. I can simply right click in here and I can just go from stock. As soon as I go from stock, you're going to notice that a plane pops up on my screen. Now I can orientate this with our natural master cam ability here by the over arrows to get my orientation right the way I want to come and probe that. In this case here, this is the orientation that I like. I'm going to go ahead and use the top plane and it's going to fill in some dimensions for me. It's going to fill in a dimension with the X, a Y, a width, and a height. In here, it's a simple click into here and it can tell it how high do I want to measure. Now I can input a uh, value in here. I can also have my right click menu in here as Mastercam has in all of its dialog boxes. Or I can simply start scrolling my middle mouse wheel and it'll show me on the screen automating this out to see where I will be probing. So I'm just going to go to a measuring height of negative 400 thousandths. My safety height, once again, if I scroll this, this is how far my probe will start away. So maybe my stock deviates. Now I have the ability to start it farther out. In this case here, I'm just going to start 200 thousandths away from where the theoretical stock should be. And my clearance height, this is going to go up and down in our, in our range here for my probe to get up and over that stock potentially. And I'm just going to leave that at 200 thousandths. In here, we can set offsets. So any offset that your machine has in here, it'll evolve that in the list that we can pick out of. And this is just a simple check out of here and we will have our cycle built. Now, if I go ahead and back plot this, we're going to be able to see this on our screen. So there's our probe and our holder. And now we'll see our probe come out and measure this width of this rectangle and set my offset to the center of the part in this case. A couple other cycles we have in here is we have 0.1 axis. Maybe I want to set a Z height for this part. I can go to 0.1 axis. Once again, it's going to be the same flow over on the left hand side here. I can simply go to my cycle. I can right click and select points this time. I can select points right off my master cam screen. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that off the top of my finished part. I'm going to use the top plane once again. And it's a lot of the same stuff here. Um, it it pre-fills in my x-axis, my y-axis. I can tell it which measuring axis I'm doing, an x, y, or z. Am I going a negative or positive direction? In this case, I'm going negative. 
And what's my measuring height? I'm just gonna leave this one at zero this time because that's the top of my part. Safety distance. Once again, I'm just gonna give that a 100 thousandths. And a clearance value, I'll give of 200 thousand. As you can see on my screen, it kind of automates this out for you. And once again, which offset do I want to populate this to in my machine? And I'll just leave that at G54. Um, we do have a datum set point here. Um, maybe I was setting off of stock here, and maybe I wanted to take my first uh, cut at negative 10 thousandths uh, down into that stock. I could put a negative 10 thousandths in here, and after I probe the top of my part, it would automatically add negative 10 thousandths to that number for me, which is kind of nice. So once I have my datum set, now we can come in here and we can do our processes if I, as I have here as process one through eight, already cutting this part. And if I look at this, I am currently at this uh, stage here in this part. So I wanna come and inspect this a little bit. So I'm just gonna go right up to simple cycle probing. And I'm gonna go to workpiece inspection. Same thing here, you have all of these options here with O numbers behind there, then will be the macro calls. So in this case here, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna grab a rectangle first. So I could go, uh, let's go rectangle inside. Now the nice thing about Simcoe is they allow us a lot of the master cam functionality. So we're not losing out on any of that. If I come in here and if I right click, I can select the chain now, which makes it pretty easy. So I can come to this rectangle. I can simply just chain that rectangle. Now this is feeding all the data that uh, Simcoe needs to be able to go and process this. Now once again, I wanna make sure my plane is correct so I could flip that around and green check. It fills in all my numbers for me. Now if I wanna alter these at any time, I can. Um, my measuring height, we're gonna go a negative half inch this time. Clearance height, now I wanna crank this up a little bit just to give it a little bit of clearance. And just to make sure my measuring height is right, I can always scroll this if I want. So I'll go negative 600, that'll just give me a little bit more room in there. And now we have a bunch of options here. Any of these options have check boxes. So now I can just uh, I'll fill in maybe uh, dimensions that I want to hold with tolerances inside of this. So maybe I have a, a width, an upper uh, tolerance limit, a dimension tolerance, um, you know, maybe a width dimension. So maybe I go in there and I'm just say, I want to hold five thousandths of tolerance on this rectangle. I can also go and pick an, a tool to be offset. So maybe I'm gonna pick up tool number one. In this case, that's the one that cut that pocket out. I also have a feedback percentage adjustment. So this is saying if I'm out of tolerance by one thou, do I wanna update by one thou? Sometimes I don't want to. Maybe I just wanna go 80% back. So it'd really give me eight tenths back or depending on, on how much tolerance I'm actually using there. So I'm gonna go ahead and green check. And once again, now I have an inspection cycle on my screen with my probe going in, inspecting that rectangle, and going out. Now, one of the cool things here is if you have a multi-axis machine, you can utilize this in your multi-axis machine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to inspect this circle on this angled face here. So I'm going to go back up to my Simcoe cycle probing, workpiece inspection, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to a diameter inside of four points. This means it's gonna take four points off that diameter. Once again, in the same simple probing dialog box, I can go to cycle and now I can select arcs. If I go ahead and select that arc, now I already had a plane created here, which is kind of nice and it picked that one up. So that's the correct plane I want to measure in. And it's called an angled flat plane in this case and it fills in all my information for me. Now, this is kind of the same thing as before, you know, where am I measuring to, you know? Am I measuring to a height here? So I can adjust that with my middle mouse wheel, which makes it really nice. What's the diameter? This one's a three eighths in this case. Now I can start setting some tolerancing here as far as, you know, my true position tolerancing, uh, my dimension tolerance. Maybe my dimension tolerance, I wanna be within two thousandths. So I can type in two thousandths there and do a check between two thousandths. Uh, tool number to be up, or updated, I'll go tool number one again, and then once again the feedback percentage if I needed that. 
Another option we have is if then condition. So if I turn on if then right here, this is going to allow me to do different things if my part is good or if my part is bad. So if my part is scrap in this case, what do you want to do? Do you want to go to an M00? Do you want to go to an operation? Do you want to go to the program end? And we're going to have these options for scrap, remachining, and if it's within tolerances for you to pick from. After we're done here setting our if then conditions, if we want them set, we can simply just go and check the toolpath to complete the toolpath. And if I backplot this, now we'll see our actual probe come in at that angle. So any multi-axis machine will be able to achieve these angles. You'll be able to probe in any of them angles also. On top of this, um, in machine sim, so if you have full machine sim, now we can see our probe in there and do collisions check in between our probe and our machine environment. So if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it's going to do all the automation inside of here to show you this just as you're milling. And a couple other notes on this. Um, here is a posting. So I posted out some code just to show you what you will get. And I also uh, posted out a, a deprint report that we can do if your machine can handle deprinting. So on the left hand side here, this is posted out to your machine. So your post is going to take care of all the macro calls in here. So as you're seeing, you're seeing P numbers, P9832, 9810. These are all calling to your machine and valuing uh, properties in your macro calls in your machine. On the right, um, all that is is a report. So if you do want to get some data back out and you can deprint out of your machine, we should be able to get the data out how you want it, when you want it. By implementing Simco probing for Mastercam, you can see that now you can streamline the workpiece alignment, workpiece datum, and workpiece inspection cycles for your shop. I encourage you to check out our website at www.prototech-engineering.com for more information on Simcoe probing. And as always, thank you for watching our videos.